Hey, party people, welcome back to So Square and Cute. I hope you're having a great day. I'm Jamie and I will be your lovely host throughout this DIY project that I've got going on. If you saw my last video, I redecorated the place a little bit. There have been lots and lots of changes, but some of the things that you haven't seen are the color palette that I chose, as well as sort of upcycling this old filing cabinet that my mom got me a long time ago. This filing cabinet, I will go ahead and show you what it looks like today. I'm very happy with how it came out. Obviously there are some dents, there are some areas where the paint is coming off, and I think I now have some tips to make that better. When I did this project, it was about a year ago, I was really excited for it, and I'm still pretty happy with the way it looks today. Before we jump into the video with all of the fun painting goodness, I do wanna let you guys know a couple things or ask a few things of you. Firstly, if you're not already subscribed, don't forget to go down below, hit that subscribe button. It takes just a moment of your time. It is free, and if you decide later on that I'm not the creator for you, you can unsubscribe at any time. Also, if you wanna hit the notification bell, that would be super cool. It does what the sub button should do, but doesn't because life is fun when it's complicated, right? Also, if you'd like to support me in other ways, namely monetarily, please consider joining my Patreon or supporting me on Ko-fi. I will have those linked down below for you to check out. If you wanna hang out with me outside of the YouTube space, you can find me on both Twitter and Instagram at SoSquareMCubed. Come hang out. I always enjoy getting to see you guys outside of YouTube because I don't know, it's more fun that way. And lastly, don't forget to comment down below what are some DIY at home projects that you've been doing to kind of spruce up your living situation a little bit. I know we mostly focus on cleaning on this channel, but hey, sometimes you gotta redecorate too, right? And with all of that out of the way, let's go ahead and jump into the video. Just a heads up though, it is raining, so if the audio is weird, that's my bad. So the first clip that you're seeing is the filing cabinet after I had put on the paint stripper. I wanted to get something that I knew would be metal safe, so I did a little bit of research and I ended up getting citrus strip or citrus stripper. It's a gel stripper that you can paint on and you're supposed to keep it wet and it should bubble up the paint so that you can scrape it away. I also wanted to get something that wasn't gonna make too much of a mess in my yard because I have a very small yard, I don't have a lot of space, and I didn't want my neighbors to get upset at me for making a big, huge mess. Now, while I don't remember the exact directions on my bottle of paint stripper, you always, always want to make sure that you are following the instructions on any bottle of any chemicals that you're using because otherwise it can be pretty dangerous to use. And I just wanna make sure you guys are staying safe out there, especially when you're doing at home DIY projects like these. There was actually a part before this that you all didn't get to see. And that was while I was dismembering the filing cabinet, uh, it actually had quite a bit of rust on the bottom. I used vinegar and a wire brush to get all of that rust off, or at least as much of it as I could. I did end up, I believe, um, putting felt feet on the bottom of this filing cabinet so it wouldn't scrape up against my floor as well. But on projects like these, especially if it's metal, any rust that you leave on the project, over time, it's going to degrade what you're working on. So it's really important to get that rust off if you can, or at least get off as much of it as you can. And here you can see I'm scraping all of the weird paint gunk into a leftover Taco Bell bag, because what are we if not classy? I think it's just so satisfying seeing the back of this black filing cabinet just come off. It's so cool. Um, there were some spots there. You can see them holding on. They had some scratches, and I think the paint was just so well adhered to that that the first round of Citrus Stripper couldn't get it off. And because of that, you can now see I'm applying a little bit more of the citrus stripper on the body of the filing cabinet. And I'd waited to do the top of it last. I think my reasoning was because it would need to sit on the ground and wouldn't strip properly. I don't really remember why I didn't do it at the same time as the rest of the cabinet, but it's so satisfying to watch it go on and then like in just a few minutes, it starts to strip away. After putting the new citrus stripper on the body, 
I went ahead and started working on the actual cabinets themselves, um, or the drawers of the filing cabinets rather. They weren't too bad. I was noticing that there was paint like on the bottom for some reason. And you can actually see here too, the way the citrus stripper works is like it turns white and kind of cloudy after a little while, or at least if it gets dry. And I think that's why they tell you not to let it dry because it doesn't work as effectively if it is. I will also say citrus stripper is very, very sticky. It is not necessarily very fun to clean off or clean up. I definitely should have been wearing some kind of safety gloves, maybe safety glasses in this video. Um, I'm gonna be totally honest, the reason why I didn't is because I was super broke and I didn't have any. But that is no excuse. Always, always, always be safe when you are working with chemicals because they can be dangerous. I had tried very hard to scrape off the bottom, but it was so stuck on there. I think eventually I just gave up and didn't care about the bottoms anymore. And now finally in this clip, they are completely bare or at least as bare as I can get them. And the instructions for my spray paint said to wipe the surface down with an alcohol. I think I used isopropyl, I'm not sure. Uh, this was when supplies were in shorthand, so I got whatever I could get from my gas station. I made sure that it was nice and clean and there were no bits left over that still had any citrus strip on them. Now here is where I messed up and I messed up royally. I thought that I had purchased a primer that was intended for metallic surfaces so that the paint could better adhere. However, when I further looked at the bottle, I think what I had purchased was a textured primer. So I wanted a nice smooth filing cabinet, but I didn't really get the result I wanted because I had picked up the wrong primer and it kind of left this slightly rough texture on my filing cabinet. If you kind of feel it with your fingers, you can tell, but you can't really tell from looking at it. I'm super bummed and I might redo this in the future, but honestly, it works for how I want it and it looks great right now, so I'm not too upset. I will say though, anytime you are going to purchase a primer or a paint and primer, always, always, always make sure, one, it is going to adhere properly to the surface that you want it to adhere to, and two, that it's going to leave the texture that you want. Because I didn't know until this day that they made textured primers, and that was my bad. I spent like 40 bucks on a spray paint and primer and I bought all the wrong stuff. So part of my footage did get corrupted and I'm kind of bummed that I don't have the final finished video for you, but essentially I did do my primer. And then on top of that, I believe I ended up having to do two or three coats of white spray paint to get it that glossy finish that I wanted. It was hard work for sure. It took a few days but I really love the results. I'm very happy and I can now show you the color palette that I have been working off of and eventually how my whole apartment uh, is going to tie in together. I made this a long time ago. I don't know if I'm gonna keep some of these colors and obviously you can see like there's a lot of colors in it. <laughs> some colors I may not be using anymore so I might rework that in the future, but at the time, this was my color palette and I still kind of want to remain true to it. So we'll see where that takes me in the future. Anyways, guys, that was the video of me restoring my little DIY filing cabinet. I'm very, very happy with how it came out. Obviously, I should have bought the correct primer. That was on me. And also as far as like the dents and everything, I could have taken my time with like a small hammer or something and gotten those out, but realistically, I just didn't want to put that much effort into this particular project. Maybe in the future, I might go a little bit more into the DIY instead of upcycling, but for now, this works just fine and it's exactly what I want. Anyways, y'all, thank you so, so very, very much for watching. Thank you for subscribing for commenting, for sharing. If you do, that's beautiful. Thank you so much. I really do enjoy making these videos and the redecoration series was probably 
the most fun and most rewarding for me to put together. So I really hope you enjoyed this. If you did, maybe leave a like, that'd be great. I don't know what video I have coming out next, but I'm pretty sure it's going to be just a standard cleaning video, nothing too hullabaloo about it. But then we'll get back to my redecoration, my KonMari. We're gonna get back into the swing of things. So don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss any of my future videos. And in the meantime, I love you guys. Stay cool, stay cubed, and I will see you in the next one. Mwah. Toodles.